Hello guys, uh, I'm back. My name is Hassan from Chrono Studios uh, and today uh, I'll be showing you a tutorial uh, on how, you know, on the, the advantages of using Xref in 3ds Max uh, because it's going to save you a lot of time, a lot of, uh, uh, well, I'll call it uh, maneuvering time and uh, file and uh, hardware resources so it's going to save you a lot of it's going to save you two things time and uh, hardware resources so uh, there's this project we're currently working on and uh, it's quite a big project and there are a lot of buildings on the site uh, it's a low cost housing project uh, okay and you can see now uh, the, the peculiar thing about this project is that the buildings are already on ground and the terrain for the building is so 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 uh, treacherous you know it's it's hard and then uh, the client expects us to you know come up with almost similar results to what we have here so uh, th th the first thing about this site is that if you look at it it's quite undulating and it's very big it's a large scene with a lot of vegetation around it it's uh, you know it's somewhere quite in a remote place and we have to replicate this so uh, the first thing we did was um, okay I'm gonna show you some of the tests these are all works in progress I'm gonna show you you know what we're able to come up with you can see the terrain you know the terrain model now you can see the foliage used uh, but, but we, we used the carbon scatter uh, okay these are some other parts of of, of, the, of the project you can see how the terrain you know gently on delays and we, we had to work with uh, you know the terrain data from the uh, surveyors so uh, I, i'm going to show you how we're able to handle this you know this kind of big scenes uh, you know without crashing our computers and uh, really the trick the trick really the trick really is in uh, using uh, xrefs because if you look at this scene now you know we have quite a whole lot of things in it i'll show you two basic ones we have all the buildings you know we have the road you know we have uh, the foliage we, I mean the plants we have the cars and the street lighting uh, and then what else do we have now we have the dense trees okay so uh, you don't you don't want to have to you know work in a single max file when you're doing this so I'm going to show you how we were able to uh, conquer that uh, the first thing we did was uh, we had to populate the buildings right we had to populate the buildings in the scene and uh, okay let me let me do this so that you can see it well and then the, the, the trick was that having uh, having these buildings with you know multiple steps so that you can sink them into the ground so that when when the terrain comes you can sink them you know individually into the grounds before you have this one or two steps hop on the ground uh, and okay I, I, if you look at this this is actually an extra object uh, let me just be sure references xref objects okay yeah yeah if you look if you look at this this these are xref objects in this scene and this this big scene actually contains all the buildings and each building is a max file now if you look at the total number of polygons and faces that we have in this project you can see it's it's here it's it's quite huge and uh, now this these are all the buildings in the entire scene and uh, you know that that's uh, <laughs> that's after after we you know we displaying them as boxes uh, let, let me let me just uncheck this so we can yeah we can have a good look at this so these are all the buildings you can see how how we were able to populate this on undulating land it, it it was quite uh, it was quite a difficult task uh, but yeah it we, we actually learned a whole lot while working on this project so uh, now now that we extra use xref objects now there are two t types of xrefs uh, xref scene and xref objects uh, funny enough not this is uh, this should be xref object uh, references xref object so what we did is that for xref object you import you know each object of your scene with uh, the xref you know create xref record from file so you tell it to navigate to 
where which object you want to extract. So when you tell it to do that, you just bring it in and then you place it where you want to place it. D the advantage is that when you modify the main file, you know, it, it could be the it could be the roof materials, it could be you know it could be the roof materials you're trying to modify when you modif mo when you modify the original file you know you don't have to modify your scene in here you know all you have to do is just uh, update it and just update your xref records and you know everything is everything is back here yeah, we have the update tool here so when you click update the original file is propagated here and you're good to go so you don't have to so even if the client makes changes and says no i want this building to be red all you have to do is go to the original file right which is this open it in the new max file change the colors and then you come here to update it so that you don't have to repopulate your entire scene again now this is the magic part you know after having the entire scene populated this way you really want to start populating other objects without having to touch these buildings again so you, you have to save this entire file as a record and then you know have a, have a, a scene where you have all other things including the roads including the vegetation including your cameras and stuff and then you can use a reference xref scene now now when you xref your scene you can't move your object about it just sits it just sits in the in the in the scene it just sits in the scene and uh, if you look at this we have all buildings on layout xref which are all the buildings on the site so really you can either enable it or turn it off or you know show visible or make it display as box so that you can save off save up a lot of ram and uh, a lot of time you know orbiting into your scene now if you look at here you can see that even though we have all our ob all our buildings in this scene now our total police have is very very small in fact really what it's considering as poly here is probably what uh, what we have on the site which is the terrain that's that's about the only thing is referring to because if you look at the original file which you had it had 2.5 million police you know and here it's it's almost negligible so it's it's you know it's gonna help you to orbit your scenes faster and you can do a lot of things without having to worry about uh, RAM usage or maybe a freezing computer or, or something uh, okay now I'm going to hide I'm going to hide those buildings Sh should in case I don't need the buildings anymore at this moment I can just disable it right so I'm left with uh, I'm left with only my site I'm left with only my site and okay one more thing to disable Uh, let me just disable this so yeah that's what I have and here is my site and now I can unfreeze all and work on my terrain I can unfreeze all and work on my terrain you know while all my buildings are still very hidden so it, it saves me a lot of hobbiting time and then I don't have to worry about how much of my file is used and then another thing it saves you is you know be because because you have it uh, you have other buildings I mean the buildings in your file saved somewhere you can't really even worry about uh, you know max file crashing because I mean you your files are going to be saved somewhere and then all you have to do is hex ref them back again so uh, basically uh, that's how we've been able to achieve you know this test renders and uh, we're still working on this project and we already had uh, tests animations for the presentation so I mean really if you're using xref it's going to save you a whole lot and uh, well <laughs> I hope someday you really come across probably huge scenes like this and uh, you need to handle very complicated uh, uh, objects or scene population so good luck in your scenes uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you. This is Hassan. Bye.